Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your third French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Resident Evil 4, the remake. So we're going to start to optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So, I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off, and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's, it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so first of all, resolution, just play with your native resolution, super important. So if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. Same thing with your refresh rate, just make sure that it's matching your monitor. So super important. Frame rate, I just played variable, so it's kind of like the unlimited. You have a couple of options if you have a thermal issue in your computer, don't render too much. So for, for an example, you're playing on a laptop, you have a 60 Hertz monitor, just like your FPS at 60, because sometimes people just put their FPS on unlimited, they're starting to have like some thermal issue. And after that, the CPU or the GPU start trolling. And after that, you're getting some drop and stuttering. So don't do that. Display mode, full screen, all the other modes are causing like drop in your FPS and also stuttering. So super important to use that. V-Sync, I deactivated just to maximize my FPS. But again, it's a question of preference. It's not like a competitive game. So if you don't like tiering, just activate your vertical sync. Also, you can use other technology like G-Sync or Free Sync if you want. Cinematic resolution really depend on your monitor. Like if you really want the 4K because you have a 4K monitor, go with 4K. If you have a 1080p and you just want uh, your um, cinematic to be upscale, just go with 4K also. Me, I just go with Full HD. Ray tracing, I recommend to deactivate it. It will tank your FPS. You can definitely run it, honestly, if you have like a 1090, 4090, 4080, something like that. But if you have like a video card like the 2060, 2070, don't use that. It will tank your performance. After that, you have a, a two different options. I don't recommend to use a super resolution one. Just go with two at quality. All the other modes. Not a big fan, honestly. Uh, the image quality degraded a lot. You will see some blurriness when you will moving. Uh, quality is not bad. If you don't have issue with your FPS, I just recommend to go with off and use those settings. 100% rendering mode at normal and use TAA. Normally, I always say to remove anti-aliasing in those games. It feels blurry, but in this game, anti-aliasing is crazy. You have aliasing everywhere, so that's why I recommend to go with TAA. If you use the super resolution 2 at quality, you can expect 15% boost in your FPS. After that, texture quality, texture quality and filtering. Just look at the amount of memory that you have over there. Just make sure that you have 10% empty. So just modify uh, over there depending on what you want to move. And also the same thing with your texture filtering. For mesh quality, I recommend to go with mid. It's the best compromise. I, I, I feel like if I compare low to mid, I see 1% to 2% different in your FPS, but it looks a lot better. So go with mid. Shadow quality, this one will provide you the most of your FPS. Go with low. You can expect 14% boost in your FPS. Make sure that your shadow cache is activated and deactivate your conduct shadow. Another 4% boost in your FPS over there. For uh, occlusion, if you want pure performance, go with off. The game will looks very flat. I recommend to use the Fidelity FX. Not a huge impact on your FPS, and it's a lot better for your visual. 
volumetric lighting really important also it's a bit like shadow a lot of fps so if i compare like the i versus low you can expect a 12 percent boost in your fps so definitely go with low with this one and particle lighting quality go with low also it will really help when you will see explosion and stuff like that your rain uh if you're getting some random drop that's probably because of your particle Bloom, I recommend to deactivate it. Screen space reflection, go with off. Subsurface -sur scattering. This one you can easily run uh, uh, at on, so no issue over there. You can activate it. Air strain, I recommend to go with normal. I is taking a lot of resources, uh, random, but not randomly, but uh, I did some tests on my 1050 on my uh, laptop and uh, I was lagging like crazy with the, the air strain. So go with normal, and if you're very limited with your resources, go with off. Uh, the dismemberment, you can definitely stay at on. Persistent course, I recommend to go with few. It will help a little bit. Same thing with the physics of the, the, the course. If you're struggling with your uh, CPU, go with low for sure. Uh, the uh, diverse uh, enemy animation, go with off. Motion blur off also to have a better visibility. Rain quality, I recommend to go with low. Uh, if I compare rain quality... Whoa... If I compare rain quality with I, you can expect like 4% boost in your FPS, so definitely go with low. Terrain at off, destructible environment. Uh, I like to have that in this game, so I'm putting in that on, but if you're seeing your FPS dropping like 10, 15, 20 uh, FPS when something's just breaking, uh, just <laughs> remove it if you don't like that, but I feel like you should have this one at on for a game like this. Lens flare and lens distortion, I recommend to go with off, def off feel, off also for better visibility. And all those lighting quality and effect quality, I recommend to go with low. You can expect a nice 8% boost in your FPS. Again, the guide really depends on your computer. I'm just showing you like which one is the best when you're turning uh, on or off and how many FPS that you uh, can have. This engine, uh, I think they did like four or five different games on it. It's running well, so it really depends. Normally, if you have just a 1060, you can run a lot of those settings at medium easily. So just choose whatever uh, option that you need, depending on your objective for your FPS. So that's about it. If you have any question about Resident Evil 4, the remake, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.